Hello, I'm Maria of Historical Bell, and today we are going to be talking about this lovely Godey's Ladies book. Oh, it is from 1861. Godey's Ladies book, alternatively known as Godey's Magazine and Ladies book, was an American woman's magazine that was published in Philadelphia from 1830 to 1878. And in, 18, in, in the 1860s, Godey's considered itself the quote-unquote queen of monthly. So you get this monthly book. So here you can see the difference. So I have this giant book. That is all of the years or all of the years magazines bound together into this one book. So you, you can keep them because it has stories and recipes and a bunch of other fashionable things that we are going to be looking at in just a moment. But here I just want you to see, this is what it would have looked like as it was sent to you. This is a reproduction copy that I own. I got it from Amazon Dry Goods. It's super awesome. And you'll see that it's a, an exact reproduction of the Goodies Ladies book from over 150 years ago. It's super awesome. I really like the cover of the Godey's Ladies book. It is just so intricate and it has so many different scenes on it. it. Kind of gives you a little bit of a preview as to what's going to be inside. I just really like it. So this is the January issue that we are going to dive right into. So this is the first one that's going to be in the book that I'm going to show in a moment. One of the things that Godey's Ladies book is super well known for is this front pullout right here. And I love this one. This is from the January issue of 1861. And it has all of these beautiful ball gowns or ball dresses as it says on the bottom very faintly. So here we see one, two, three, four, five different versions. And we also have this little child's dress down here. I like this one. That one's my favorite. Which one's your favorite? We're going to start numbering from the left. So left is one and then going to five. So my favorite is five. Let me know in the comments which one you like best down below. But this, uh, this is the only thing is a little different than the original. Those should have technically, it would be hand watercolored in. So sometimes you see those at antique stores framed by themselves, just these beautiful watercolor antique paintings and they're, they're gorgeous. Mine is not hand watercolored. It, it is not like that. Here we have another thing that's from Goody's Ladies book, and that is music. So you could be, you would be sent a song that you could play and sing on your piano. Um, pretty sure that's piano music. I play the flute, so uh, and I, I I play piano kinda sorta to the point where I know enough to get me in trouble, and I I, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I can play like the beginning of Fear to Lease, and that's about it. I'm talking to one of my musical, more musically inclined friends about possibly recreating some of these songs. Here we have some beautiful dresses. On the left, we have a lady's walking dress. And on the right, we have the Evelyn. So these are dresses that would be more pop appropriate and popular among younger ladies. Of course, some embroidery patterns as well at the top. Ooh, and here we have a lovely cape and a opera hood of another embroidered pattern on the top there different styles of aprons these are fancy aprons these are not utilitarian aprons they are fancy and made of silk here we have some more patterns that you can follow i love this lace pattern here this um, embroidered lace it is gorgeous it is so beautiful i'm so is mo this motivates me to go and figure out how to digitize embroidery because I want to do it so bad because this would be a gold mine for patterns. Here we have some lovely bed jackets. And again, more embroidery patterns. This one is a beautiful hanky pattern. And then that is embroidery for a boy's um, frock coat or outfit. This one, that's the corner of a hanky there with the initials in those two loops. It is gorgeous, so gorgeous. And that, that one's the boys one. And some beautiful letters. 
I really like all those embroidered letters. It's quite elegant. Here we have one of the stories that Goaty's Ladies Book has. This one's The Governess. I was told that this this book uh, exists on the internet. If you Google it, it's it's I believe it's just called the the governess, where it's called like Sunshine and Shadows, quote unquote, the governess. And it has a whole e each month you get a new installment of what's going on with this governess. I have not read it, so I cannot recommend or n not recommend it. At some point, it's on my to read list, which is very, <laughs> very, very long. But it's really cool. Uh, Goody's Lady Book has a bunch of different stories that they have published in their magazine, as well as some more interesting, perhaps scholarly articles that we will be getting to a little bit later. I really like all of these accessories here. Those sleeves look like they're Renaissance sleeves. Italian Renaissance. I'm calling it. Those sleeves look very Italian Renaissance. I also really like that carriage shoe down on the bottom. That looks super comfy. Very, very comfy. And there we have a nice cap. Some interesting hairstyles. Very interesting. Very cool. And there we have a, a gentleman's Turkish cap, which is sometimes uh, referred to as a smoking cap. And there we have a, a small purse. And there we have a work basket, which is a beautiful work basket. I wish my sewing basket was that nice. Maybe I'll make one. I don't know how to make a basket, though. And that's an interesting pillow. It's a very tubular long pillow with like a, a, a holding thing on it. And there is another embroidery pattern. It's so pretty. There is a lot of embroidery patterns in here. And those are um, shoe-shaped pen wipes for your ink pen. This chemise looks a lot like the one that I hand sewed earlier this year. A lot like it. I'm going to link it at the top right here if you would like to go see the making of that. And then again, more essays and articles and stories here. Goose Lady Book also has a lot of receipts. So recipes is kind of like the better home and gardens of its day, or it's it's good housekeeping. Um, the editor was a really interesting lady, and so uh, there there's Godies, but then there's the lady who I I think really did you know all the work, and her name was Sarah Josepha Hale. And Sarah Josepha Hale was an American writer, activist, and an influential editor at Godies Ladies Book. And she was the author of the nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb. She also famously campaigned for the creation of the American holiday known as Thanksgiving. So she was the one who wrote Abraham Lincoln uh, asking him to make Thanksgiving a national holiday during the middle of the Civil War. So that's, that's also, that's one of the reasons why we have Thanksgiving is this lady right here who is also the editor of this book. She also campaigned for the completion of the Bunker Hill Monument. She was an abolitionist. She did not support the women's suffrage movement. She was very much into traditional gender roles and the cultodomesticity whole ideals. As is pretty evident throughout this book, it's very much about how a lady can improve herself and her home. But she was very much for the education of children regardless of their gender which is really cool so you know and she isn't exactly this ideal victorian housewife either she's the editor of a newspaper or not a newspaper but this this magazine so i just it's very interesting i think she was kind of forced out of the home because her husband tragically died um so that could be a reason so here here you can see how the periodical can be bound into the book. So it's pretty much just all of these bound in, into a book so that you can save them, so you can save all these recipes and articles and fashion advice and tips and tricks. And, and also these really cool uh, paintings, uh, well, sketches and such. 
Godey's Lady Book was also famously non-political during the American Civil War. So as you can see, this book was published in 1861. I would say the most atrocious American war raging on all around this. And um, it, it, ha it doesn't reference the war once. It, one of its editors did denounce slavery in an article, and that was too political and she got fired. And then they apologized to her later, but she didn't get her job back. So it's in Philadelphia. One of the reasons people think that it might not have been political is because it had a very large amount of readership in North and South. But I think it really was just a form of escapism. All of these pretty dresses and this ideal of creating a good home that's, you know, not being torn apart by war sounds nice another reason is you know because if it had readership on both sides of the war you, you know then you don't want to lose readership but Godey's lost a lot of its readership during the American Civil War I'm not sure necessarily if that's because they didn't choose a side or because times were getting so tight and the South was blockaded and paper was scarce. Newspapers were being printed on wallpaper in the South during the American Civil War because there was no paper to, to even to, to get the news, let alone a home, home magazine booklet full. Another reason I think politics are not minute is because of one of the editors there is there, right there, Sarah J. Hale. She didn't support the women's suffrage movement. She did not support women getting into politics. Therefore, she's not going to write to women about politics for them to then get involved. So, so therefore, by just writing about the home, about fashion, she is putting that ideal out there that women are not supposed to be involved in politics because politics are not in the Godey's Ladies book. Here I am just flipping through pages in the book that we had just we have already looked through in the the uh, magazine version but there is that interesting tiger there that is in color and I have no idea where it came from but uh, that was not in not in my magazine booklet but everything else was. So that was really interesting. I sped up this clip so don't worry the paper is fine. It, it, it's doing fine. It's just, this is all sped up so that we can just get to the, the parts that we would like to see again. So this painting is called Baby No More in this child's face. This child is unhappy that it has a new baby sibling and that it is not the baby no more. Oh my goodness, that face. I can't get over that face. Yikes, some things don't change, y'all. Some things don't change. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. I can't get over that child's face. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we're just, we're going to keep pushing through. So here we have another one of those embroidery. I think it's a cross-stitch pattern. This reminds me a lot of Queen Victoria's dog, Dash. It really does. Oh, that's very nice. I'm also going to to say that Godey's Ladies book would cater to a certain kind of lady, and that is the kind of lady that does not have to work to support herself or her family. So she is going to be middle to upper class. Another reason why she's going to be middle to upper class is because she's going to have to be able to read this book. That means that she would have had to have an education because at this moment in history, the average person is illiterate. And therefore, you're going to have to be of the more privileged upper class to be able to read, most likely. Of course, there are exceptions to every single rule in in history. But if we're, if we're talking about just people in general, this is going to be appealing to a very high class of lady. And here we have some new dresses that we have not seen. Also, ladies that could just have multiple dresses made for them or perhaps make themselves this book also does have a lot of 
um, ways to, to make things yourself, which I think is really, really cool. And I, I want to make some of these things now because you would be able to see these patterns or these pictures and then incorporate that into your own, own dressmaking or your own, um, tailoring. And there we have a little boy in a skirt. I know it's a little boy in a skirt because his hair is parted to the side. If it was a girl, her hair would be parted in the middle. But that's is really interesting. Until more modern times, boys would wear skirts until they were five, seven. Well, after they were like definitely until they were potty trained or outhouse trained. And then they would have a breaching ceremony. And that's when the boy would be given his breeches. And it, like, or, or pants. But up until that point, skirts. Skirts or um, even if they had pants under it, we'll see one of the examples in a little bit. Um, it, it's just really interesting how, how fashion for little boys has changed. I love these dresses for little girls right here. And all of this embroidery on this dress would have been done in silk thread, it said on the the little caption there i think it's beautiful you can tell these are for little girls because they're much shorter and also the sleeves are shorter and the necklines are much different than they would be for a grown woman as well so this is a very high neckline this is actually a little bit of a low neckline i assume that there might be something um like a shim chemisette that would go under it but you know i don't know it does not say here i guess that would be wearer's preference i also love this infant gown it reminds me of a baptismal gown, but it doesn't say it's a baptismal gown at all. It just reminds me of that. Here's another little boy's dress. It has some awesome embroidery and braiding on it. And then the rest of them are little girls' dresses. They are also so pretty and so much embroidery. I love all of these little dresses. Cinderella slipper? What? What? That definitely says Cinderella slipper. That is so cool. That is so cool. Look at it. It says it's a Cinderella slipper. Now I want to have a Cinderella slipper with the same design. That's so cool. I always wonder sometimes how popular like things that are today, like, you know, Disney princesses or whatnot. Of course, Disney isn't around in the 1860s, but the story of Cinderella has been around for ages. I just, I think that's so cool. Okay. Other super cool thing is here we have an article about the history of fashion in the fashion book. So I'm going to summarize this article here. And if anyone's more interested into it, perhaps I can do another video that just goes into detail on this. Otherwise, we're going to be here all, all day. We're already here for a very long time. This is about the farthingale. So the hoop support or the skirt support that is hoop shaped um, that was used in the court of Elizabeth the first. And then it talks about the Georgian uh, fashion and then how that kind of morphs into the 1860s. The hoop skirt had to come back into fashion. So it's basically the history of the hoop skirt as they knew it at this point. And then here we have some robe la Francaise action going on. That's super cool. Love that. And it, it talks more about Georgian fashion and all of this other stuff. So it's a, I can't get it. It's a, it is an historical fashion article in a historic book. And I think it's so cool, like what their ideas were versus what our ideas were. Also super cool thing. It shows you how to make your own baby bassinet, which if I ever have a reason to do so, I am going to that's so cool it, teach, it literally shows you right here step by step how to make this bassinet i just think that's so cool and it's so pretty it is so pretty here we have a a picture of jesus and the little children
And here we have some more 1860s fashion goodness. We are still in the more chilly months, so we have a cape there and an awesome jacket with some massive sleeves and a giant tassel on it. That's super fantastic. I love these bonnets. These are some high spoon bonnets. It literally, it lo they look like spoons, but I love them. And super decorated, super decorated bonnets. These bonnets would be all tricked out with all kinds of feathers and flowers and ribbons, as you can see there. Now, I took a minute for me to, to figure out what this thing is. It's actually a bridal pin cushion. How awesome is that? I didn't know a bridal pin cushion was really a thing, but it's gorgeous. So, yeah. It looks like it has a bunch of beads on it and stuff. Like, that's awesome. Some more lace. I can always look at lace. And then quilting patterns, embroidery patterns, mending patterns. They got it all here. These letters actually look really modern to me they look like bubble letters but like bubble letters are it's just letters made out of little bubbles or circles i don't know it just it doesn't look victorian to me now here's a really interesting article about how a steam engine works which was super cool to read so it's just it's very scientific but they try to put it into familiar languages what they call so it's you know it's not I can understand it, and I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I also like the graphics. I thought that was pretty cool, too. Another really cool thing about Goody's Ladies Book is that it, it gives you drawing advice. So, how to do artsy things. So, this one is about how to... is a lesson in moss painting, so it teaches you how to paint moss. I think that's really cool. So it teaches you how to do all of, like, these super cool hobby things. Again, some really pretty children's dresses and blouses and a mantle. I love all the embroidery on all this. I super love all the embroidery. And all the frills. I mean, if I ever have children, this is probably what they're going to end up wearing. Let's be honest. I also really like that that Bertha. That's really cool. Now, a really interesting thing about the 1860s. Neckties for women, super in, especially younger women. They were super, super in. And these are very decorative, very frilly bow ties or, or neckties. But this was very in for women. Here we have the Garibaldi suit, which was before a little boy. We can tell it's a younger boy because it still has like a skirt to the jacket here, but also has pants, which was very common for young boys to have. Also, I was going through this book and they wanted to put the name Garibaldi on everything. And if you don't know who Garibaldi is, he um, is an Italian general. And I'm going to put a link down in the description box about uh, she's a professor who who works um, with someone else that I know, and she gave a talk at the Northeast Georgia History Center, virtually, since we are in 2020, about Garibaldi and his influence in the American Civil War and America in the 1860s, and it's very fascinating. I highly go, suggest that you go check it out, because it's, it's more than just his influence on the American Civil War, as in battle tactics and such. It's influence on American culture, because they wanted to name all the clothing items after him, too. Which I just thought, wow. It's just, it's very interesting. So if there's anything, like, remotely military-related, Garibaldi. Uh, I actually have a whole video about Garibaldi shirts for, for ladies, which I am also going to link. Another one of my absolutely favorite thing about Goody's Ladies book is that it has architectural plans and i love it so much as a historical architecture person mwah, 
beautiful. This is called uh, a cottage in the bracketed style. Today we would probably call that in a, the Italianate style because it has those large brackets and then the large overhang. But I love it so much. And this is a very happy donkey. But uh, my historic preservation heart was so happy when I came across those those plans. I just, I love it so much. And this, oh, we're having a pullout moment. So this is some really interesting stuff here. So we have some wrappers. So this is spring. This is their spring spread. We have some wrappers here, some very loose fitting open front. I really like that. This is a double lapel here, which I um, thought that was super cool some children's outfits so we have a boy's girl outfit and a girl's outfit we can tell this boy he is older he is wearing full-on pants we can tell this is a younger girl her skirt's still shorter and you can still see her pantalettes under and then we also have this really fun spring coat here and a tiny parasol and then on the back side i'm going to be really really careful here we're not going to be able to see all of it but this is a super awesome dress line bodice closure here it's zigzaggy Again, another song, some more headwear. So we have a snud, and that's this crisscrossy thing here that's made out of ribbon. And then we have some bonnets. The bonnets have, they're, they're still, um, I would say they're not quite spoon bonnets. They're a little, well, they're kind of spoon bonnets, but they're much lower, lower brim. So lower brim for spring. This is just an embroidered collar and cuffs, which is beautiful some nightgown uh, and pen wipes so butterfly pen wipe there that you would use some more embroidery again with the letters that don't look Victorian some caps uh, I don't know how how true this is or how much folktale it is but I was told that a married lady would start wearing caps so once a once a lady was married that's when she would start wearing caps during the day like just in her house and if you went outside you would have well i guess it depends on how formally you went outside you would probably have um, a sun hat on or a bonnet on or something a little more formal than just your cap again i don't have any sources to back that up just hearsay but it makes sense Look at this chevron dress. You know, I never think of chevrons as a print for 1860s, but it's obviously there. Oh, uh, one day, one day I'm going to make a mantle like this. Because I love, I love the mantle so much, just as an aesthetic point. And then all those ruffles... Oh, it's beautiful. I saw one one time made out of lace with all those ruffles. Oh, it was to die for. So we're going to zoom up. <laughs> we're going to zoom in on those ruffles because I... Oh, they're beautiful. It's just like a really intense shawl. It's just so pretty. And that bonnet is very nice too. As you can see, it's not there. It's still kind of a spoon bonnet, but it's not as intense as the other spoon bonnets that we had seen in the earlier month. Here we have an embroidery pattern for a slipper. So it's this beautiful butterfly on the toe of a slipper. Now I really want embroidered slippers because I've seen so many of them in this book. Maybe I'll add it to the, my long list of things to make. Okay, I love this. This is a lady's robe, which is, looks stunning. This is an infant's robe. And then we also have the robe for the gentleman, which is one of the very few gentleman things that we've seen in this book or, or outfits for the gentleman. But here we have, it's just robes for the whole family and I love it. I'm not sure why there's a piece of blue paper in there, but um, it's there. So here we are approaching the middle <laughs> of Godie's Ladies Book. So I have decided to split this up into two parts. Right now we are going, to, in this video, we are going to go from January through June. And then 
we will start with the second um, part of the year. So July through December will be in part two because otherwise this was just going to get too long. I rather I split it up so uh, we are not here for for hours and hours on end. Um, yeah, so here we have some more goodies ladybug patterns. I think it's really cool that they have quilting patterns, like and any type of pattern that you can imagine is here. And I love that embroidery pattern with the initials in the middle. Oh, that's gorgeous. So so it's just a wealth of information here really i feel like i i have been given a treasure trove of information and i haven't even gone through half of the articles or anything yet i'm, I'm really just flipping through and scanning about things at the moment but it's a fantastic primary source material that i am i'm so excited to use in historical research as well as costuming for my historical costumes there's just it's just so much. It's like a little time capsule. I love this blouse. You don't really see anything like it. In, in a lot of things but oh okay it kind of looks like the michelin man like with the tires but also i love it and again here we have another dress print with chevrons which i just i never think of that as being a victorian print but lo and behold here it is again i also like the different types of hats that we have here for summer so we have a very low crown bonnet and then we also have that summer hat with the veil which is lovely and then here, I think it's interesting. It's it's summer, but they are advertising some cloaks for summer, which I I have never needed a jacket for summer, but it might just be because I live so far south. Um, I think I would die of of heat stroke if I because <laughs> I I've almost gotten heat stroke out in my costumes before in the summer, which was bad. But I, I think if I was to wear a giant cape over it, I I would actually be done for. Again, we have some more lovely bonnets and caps. Oh, and here we have a nice white brim hat with a beautiful bow. I love how decorative all of these are. Again, very decorative aprons and belts. More embroidery, so many embroidery patterns. We, we have made it to July. Therefore, I am concluding this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot about Goody's Lady book, American in the 1860s, and historical fashion. I will use that blue piece of paper to mark our place so that we will start there when we pick back up next week and we go through the second half of this book and learn more historical tidbits and historical fashion things. I love doing this. It's so fun. It, it combines all of my love of, of research and, and history and fashion and it, it sinks it all into this one lovely book um, that all of these magazines are made out of. So thank you so, so much. I'm about to announce the winner of the 5,000 subscriber giveaway and that is Katrina DeCarver! Congratulations! You are in the now... Uh, proud owner of the necklace and bag so please email me at historicalbell.business at gmail.com to claim your prize please send me your address and shipping information and i will get that out to you asap y'all thank you so much for all of your sweet sweet comments i absolutely loved going through and reading all of them and i tried to respond to everyone that i could i i I truly treasure it and and I am so thankful that y'all are my subscriber base. Y'all are amazing and make it make it really possible for me to to create these videos and to share my love of history and fashion and all of its messy, complicated, beautiful glory. So thank you 
so, so much. I really appreciate it.